How's it going everyone? I'm Sir James coming at you guys with another lightsaber review. This time we have Star Killer's lightsaber done by TXQ. This is their updated version to the model. Now this video was made possible courtesy of Vader Savers. So if you're interested in whatever it is that they tend to offer, I do have my own affiliate link and discount code that you can use located in the video description down below. Now I will mention that I actually never had TXQ's first version of their star killer i did look at images prior to starting up this review just to kind of see if there's any noticeable differences and honestly visually yeah there's a huge noticeable differences between their first one and versus their nicely updated second variation of the hilt right here so let me go ahead and give you guys a closer look here now um, in terms of the weathering of the hilt this comes standard with it as far as i'm aware i don't know if there's a non weathered one i know their first one was but this one here has got that dirty grimy look which easily fits how it should be because as i recall in the game it never looked clean so first off in terms of the blade use this will be using the one inch blade diameter not a seven eighths i thought it was seven eighths at first but it is the one inch blade you do, of course, have your exposed kyber crystal compartment right here, which will ignite once everything is lit up. On the other side, you do have this glass eye, which also emits a little bit of a see-through light-up effect, which we will see a little bit later on. This is a two-button setup, which, by the way, the board inside this hilt is the SN Pixel, just so you are aware. And here is the bottom. Now, I did kind of notice on here a little bit of a different design that I've normally seen on other Star Killer hilts. But the other cool thing, too, is that unlike a lot of lightsabers where you tend to have um, holes where the audio will go through, there's no noticeable holes here, which is quite interesting. Now, if you wish to get access to your chassis, you're going to go ahead and unscrew this bottom compartment right here. And here's how this one looks on the inside. As you can see, you can't really see my reflection through, which is pretty cool, but it's still nice and loud. Now, before we actually put this back on, I just want to go ahead and showcase the chassis here. And here is the chassis. As you can see on the one side, you still have your removable battery with a USB-C charging port. And on the other side, you can get access to your SN Pixel board. And these arrows here indicate which way it's going to go when you put it back into the health. Now, one thing I will point out, because some of you might be kind of curious, if you already have lightsabers in your collection by TXQ, and let's say you happen to, uh, you know, get something like an SN Pixel, and maybe you want to use a Profi version, can you just take, you know, your Profi board from that, put it onto here, you know, just by swapping the chassis? Yes and no. Now, this here is probably what i would consider i would say and i could be wrong on this information by the way i don't know everything is i feel like this is the most common standard size of the uh removable chassis that you're going to get uh which looks like this it's very identical however on the star killer one if we put it side by side the star killer one is noticeably a little bit smaller just so you know, I did try to put this one into the Star Killer hilt to see if it would work. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit too long and it's not really usable. But if you happen to have another lightsaber collection that uses the shorter chassis, then technically, yes, you could swap out the chassis with that and then you'll be good to go. And when you pop it into place, just follow the arrows matching up with the crystal chamber and you are ready to go. Now, of course, do keep in mind that when you do order this, you are going to get pretty much the whole shebang besides the hilts, a nice box, which is gonna contain a blade stand, blade, your retention screws, charging cable, all that stuff. And also, um, along with that, you're also going to receive this little plaque here, which says Starkiller V1. There you go. I should have taken it out of the bag, but you can see it right there. Which, um, again, the V1's a little confusing because I feel like this is more of a 
version two. This is a much upgraded, nicer upgrade compared to the version one. But then again, I don't really use the plaques too much, so this doesn't really bother me. Maybe it might bother someone else. Uh, but personally, if I would get a plaque, like if I did go with that option, I think I would want a plaque personally if it had the image of the character and then the name of the help. That's how I would go about it, which I've seen some custom ones for that. Um, so anywho, let's go ahead and uh, pop in a blade and take it for a little spin here. Can't go outside right now because of the rainy weather, but it is what it is. Go ahead and pop in the blade like so. And by the way, how have you guys been? It's been like, what, three weeks since I last spoken to you? Um, but overall, I've been doing all right. Just, uh, you know, drama and other things kind of going on in my life. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so with the SN Pixel, do you keep in mind to power this on? You do need to hold the uh, power button first until you hear. Power on. The power on symbol. As to why there's a little color here, I'm not sure why. <laughs> There we go. Just wanted to make sure that went away. And go ahead, flip that switch, and we are ready to begin. So let me go ahead and show you guys the lighting elements really quick first. Again, got the lighting element from the exposed kyber crystal. A little lighting element right in here. And of course, the main blade itself. As far as how does the saber feel being in the hands, even with all this exposed area on the top here, just like with some of the other Star Killer sabers uh, that I've held before, it's always obviously the most comfortable in the center. I don't feel like that tends to get in the way. I forgot it's got that, some of the gesture controls on here. So, um, I guess to, to kind of go off the bat a little bit here, uh, before we go back to the comfort area, is that, of course, there's gesture controls on here by default with the SN Pixel, which is nice. So you got your you know, twist on, twist off. You also got the uh, swing on and all that fun stuff. So pretty cool. There's a lot of customization here with the SN Pixel uh, because as you guys know, I like profi boards a lot just because of a lot of the cool wackiness that you can do with profi boards. While they're still a pain to deal with, don't get me wrong, it's just the fun factor and the end result uh, at the end of it. Once you go through all the hard work process, the reward is worth it at the end. But the nice thing with SN Pixel is especially if you're not comfortable with Profi is that you still of course get all your adjuster controls on there you still get a handful of nicely included saber fonts which is pretty neat uh, and of course there's other built-in customizations and stuff like for example if you hold down the button here Basic 4 uh, what's gonna happen is that this will change Basic 5 and that's basic now I believe there's like seven or ten basics and basically every time you uh, ignite the blade, it will do something different. Like that, which is uh, not the one that I wanted to see because a lot of strobing effects there on that one. Basic six. Here we go. So like, as you can see here, we kind of got like almost like the raindrop effect going on here, which is pretty nice. And all we're doing just to edit that is just holding down the bottom. Basic seven until that changes and then of course you get added effects with it some of you might not care for these effects that's perfectly fine but for those of you who want that extra stuff just so you could show off to your friends you have it all right here ready to go and i think this one's a little fun one i kind of like this one it reminds me of a uh, pong but in a lightsaber form oh that would be kind of cool imagine a I don't know if that's just me, but imagine like a lightsaber font where it's related to Pong. And then somehow you can make it to where you have like the ball moving back and forth with the two white strips there. I don't know, something like that. I feel like someone's got to make it or someone has already made it. If so, I need it. <laughs> um, of course, to change your lightsaber uh, fonts, you're just going to go ahead and press down on the secondary button. Ventress. It's got Ventress on here. 
And of course, Leia. Uh, as you change the blades, the crystal will change to match with everything else. And it does the same thing too with all the color cycle mode. And to change colors after the saber is on, you're going to like point it downwards, press the secondary button, and like twist the hilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. On, downward, just like that. And no matter what I change it to, this will match that. Nice teal color right there. And you don't have to press like another button to like lock it in. It's going to be good to go right off the bat. Uh, to cycle through some of the other fonts on here. Not sure what that one was. Party. You even got Darth Vader on there. Very nice. I always like Darth Vader's saber font. Just classic and menacing and very evil. Like it. Uh, which, by the way, there's also a Star Killer font on here, which uh, we'll get to as we cycle through that one, because that's what we started off with. Kenobi. Kenobi. Honestly, it's cool to have that one on here and the Star Killer Saber font because he also voiced Darth Maul in the uh, Rebel series, which was uh, kind of cool. So definitely a lot of Saber fonts on here. We'll ignite that one though. Yeah, Kylo Ren. Now, as far as Kylo Ren, I also like his lightsaber, uh, not only design, but I also like the sound of it too. It's one of my other favorites. I am the Inquisitor. There you go. Tell me, is this training? My training master wouldn't do. I am told it is the dark saber. Get a white in there. There you go. I think that's the one with the um, clashing with the Beskar spear. Yeah, it's got the Beskar spear clash. back to star killer so yeah like i said you do get a lot of lightsaber fonts on here by default which is great now as far as any form of nitpicks or do i have any nitpicks to go on with um it's only one and it might be just with mine i don't know if it's a common thing uh, to be on there is um is in regards to where the retention screw is so by default we already got the one on here which is what's holding this blade but if you look on here to the side, there appears to be another one, which it might be easier to see if I ignite this. So yeah, there's another one right there and it's not really easy to get to or to mess with. Um, and again, like I said, I don't know if this is a common issue or maybe it's just with my version here, but I felt like this top layer needs to be adjusted just a little bit over to where you could use technically two retention screws. I don't know if it's meant to be used with two. There's two holes there as far as I can tell. And so it just kind of feels like it's a little bit off putting, but that's really the only main nitpick that I honestly have about the product. I don't really have anything else because obviously, you know, everything else about it is cool. We got your kyber crystal chamber. It's dirty, weathered. Um, it fits what it needs to be. And honestly, 
That's uh, definitely a nice one. And a little bit of a history here too, to kind of rewind a little bit back, especially if you are new to the channel, is um, I did have a really nice Starkiller lightsaber. I don't remember who made that one, but it was like one of my first true ever custom sabers where I literally went and got all the parts for it, had someone uh, help me build it and all that. And eventually, you know, stuff happened. I was rocking a Crystal Focus 10 at the time, and then it broke, and then it was out for repairs for a really long time, which never happened. Got the hilt back, sent it out to someone who did a, a re-weather on it, profi installed. It was pretty much my prized lightsaber. And when my channel had reached 100,000 subscribers, I decided to give that lightsaber away to one lucky winner to show my appreciation. Do I miss that lightsaber? Yes, I miss it greatly. But at least I have another Starkiller saber to fully enjoy as well. And like I said, I think TXQ did a really nice job. They've been doing some really nice bangers lately as far as the hilts that they've been releasing. Um, one of the other ones that I have from their collection is that they recently redone the Balin Skull Saber, which I have up here, but that is for a uh, different video, of course. And I will be doing a video on that here soon. Um, but like I said, they've been doing some nice updates recently. Uh, redesigns and whatnots and updates like these and I uh, can't wait to see what they push out later this year as well because if you guys know we have the Star Wars Acolyte show that's going to be coming out which based on the trailer looks like there's going to be a lot of new lightsabers making an appearance <laughs> and um, I know with uh, some other characters too from some other shows um, but until then let me know what you guys think about this until then I'll see you guys in the next video upload and always remember May the force be with you.